Okay, now In the Loop is uh, a comedy uh, about a war. It's, it's set uh, behind the scenes in the British and American government in the lead up to a war which is never named. Uh, and we basically follow all the, um, all the people working underneath the, the, the president and the prime minister. So we never, we never see the important people, we see the kind of junior people as they build up to, as build up to the war. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the idea for the film itself came from, I, I actually always wanted to make uh, a, a fast talking comedy not really thinking that it would be about a war, but I was kind of waiting for the right story. And it was only as I read more and more about the, the sort of dysfunction that went on in Washington, all the different departments not speaking to each other, not really planning anything, and how they used the, the British in the lead up to the invasion of Iraq, that I thought, you know, this is both horrific, but it's also a farce. And as soon as I investigated that more, I just thought, you know, that is actually the story. That's the stupid story that I want. Well, yeah, did you, the, you, we, we call it reality, but, but we only get fed the stuff the politicians want us to hear uh, for the television news broadcasts. What we don't know is quietly and secretly what's going on behind those closed doors. So I went out to Washington and I spoke with people from the State Department and the Pentagon and CIA and the United Nations. And, and, and I asked them, I said, I'm not making a documentary, I'm making a comedy. But I just want to get the authenticity absolutely right. So I want to know the very dull stuff, like what time you get in in the morning, what time you got home, what uh, the people are like that you work with. And, and as they chatted to me more and more, I got a picture of what really went on in the build-up to the invasion of Iraq and, and, and started feeding that into the film. I mean, there's a whole storyline in the film about a secret committee that's set up in America, and it's given a very, very dull name. It's called the office, the the office, of the future planning committee. It's, it's all about looking into the invasion, but the president doesn't want anyone to get on the committee, so he makes it very, very dull, so they can just have quiet meetings by themselves. And it, eventually, it's leaked, and every senator in Washington is on it in the end. And so there's a tiny room full of about 50 people, and that's based on a true story. Dick Cheney, the vice president under George Bush set up a committee to look into invading Syria and Iran and he called it the Office of Future Plans and everyone heard about it and everyone joined it and so Dick Cheney shut it down and he opened up a new boring committee four doors down. So it's little things like that that you don't read about that I wanted to feed into the film because although it's it's a comedy and it's meant as an entertainment, I want people watching, uh, wa watching it to think do you know, I think this must have been what it's like. And, and, and when we showed the film, it was released in America over the summer, we showed it to a whole audience of Washington political workers who mm. who'd worked in all these buildings. Washington, and they all laughed all the way through it, but at the end they, they said, can we just apologise because that's exactly how it happened. Which is, you know, it's, it's kind of satisfying that we got it right, but it's also frightening that we got it right as well. No, I did, I did get into the State Department. I managed to invade the State Department. There's this big story about this couple who went to Obama's uh, uh, dinner uh, last week and managed to break security. I went to, I wanted to get into the State Department and I, I have a little BBC pass, which is just my name on it, and the words BBC and a photograph, and that, that's it. And it looks like it could have been made by a four-year-old. Um, and a journalist said to me, oh, just go up to the front reception of the State Department and say, BBC, I'm here for the 12.30. And the usher would be in. And I thought I'd be escorted by lots of very, very big men with weapons. But no, I was just left on my own. I, so I wandered around the State Department for about half an hour taking <laughs> photographs. I thought, this is fun, but it's also probably international espionage. And eventually someone did, a big man did come up to me and say, can I help you? And I said, I'm here for the 12.30. He said, oh, it's just down there. <laughs> so I went to the 12.30, which was very dull. And, and when the film came out in America, this was raised at the State Department. And they've now, as a result, undergone a complete review of all their security arrangements. Nothing about America is now a safer place. Well, it's little secrets, like the fact that, um, for example, in, in Washington, because of their freedom of information laws, all the emails and documents that they write are, in theory, you're allowed access to it. But they've discovered a loophole, which is that anything on a post-it note 
doesn't qualify. So all the big secrets and major decisions are written on post-it notes. So you go into the Pentagon and all over there are post-it notes saying, <laughs> you know, bomb Iran, get some milk, kill Castro. That's what they on post-it notes. Yeah, yeah we met a 22-year-old who was sent out to Baghdad to help draw up the constitution. So he's, you know, he's never bought a house. He doesn't know how a car works. He's had one girlfriend, and yet he's telling a country how to run itself. No, never. Downing Street is a working. It's where the prime minister works, and it's their office. But we, they, we were allowed into the very opening of the film. You see. Uh, Malcolm Tucker storming out of Downing Street, um, hurling abuse at journalists, and they, they let us film in there. Uh, that was no, that was very strange because of the TV show. A lot of politicians quietly like the TV show, even though it portrays them as a bunch of um, stupid monsters. Um, uh, and so, when they heard we were coming, uh, they said yes. And, and they were very nice to us, and they showed us around. We got the full tour of Downing Street. We got the, we had tea with the Chancellor's wife. We uh, we were shown around, and 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 Malcolm Tucker, the character, is this horrible, nasty man. But all the real Malcolm Tuckers who work in Downing Street were all so excited that the actor was coming that they brought in their cameras and they all took photographs of him as, as, as he came. It's an entirely UK-funded film, so although there's an American cast in it as well as a British cast, there was no. We, we said no to offers of American money in advance because I didn't want a studio or an outside source trying to make it a little bit, you know, happier at the end, or, or uh, you know, make all the Americans look nice. Um, so we wrote it and made it thinking it was entirely UK. Film and, and therefore, I had no real idea what sort of reception it would get beyond the UK. So it's just been amazing seeing the reception it's got. Uh, I mean, the Americans loved it, and it opened last month in France, and it's gone down really well there. So I'm kind of looking forward to uh, you know how it does in, in Greece because we got the uh, we were the Athens yeah. Festival a couple of months ago, and it, where it went down really well. So I'm just. I don't know whether it's because it's all about the politics of it is well known in terms of what happened in reality, but also because the film just looks at the sort of the little people in government, it really is all about working in an office and, and about the workplace and sort of um, office politics. So, so whether people relate to that, I don't know, but I've been sort of thrilled really by the reception it's got internationally.